I'm still dealing with this will to comfort thing, um, and I do believe that there is something in it. Um, to the extent that I do believe that consumer capitalism is here to pander to exactly that. And I wouldn't even say pander. If giving people what they actually want is pandering, I, you know, um, fine, they're pandering. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if there was no demand for greasy hamburgers and substandard merchandise, uh, Walmart and McDonald's wouldn't be there. If there was no demand for palliatives like a six-pack of beer, then Anheuser-Busch wouldn't be there. Um, so I think that the will to comfort is real, um, but I think that it's more uh, nuanced than that in that it's it seems to be pretty much what most people want. Most people do seem to get actual utility out of living in a cookie cutter subdivision or um, you know having the same furniture in their home as everybody else and keeping up with the Joneses and all this kind of thing in a nice comfy couch with a big widescreen TV little TV table there for little nibbles while you're watching television and a, you know great big huge belly or a large butt doesn't exactly frighten people if that's the price of a nice comfy undisturbed life it's just when that doesn't do it for you when you start to ask questions that you run into this sort of split in human society which I believe to be there uh, it's between say the herd and the non-herd. Again, I, I'm not sure if Ubermensch is the right term to describe somebody who has sort of stopped and said, everything that I see around me has nothing to do with me. It's not what I want. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, I actually think about things. When people, you know, troop off to church every Sunday, all they want is for the preacher or the priest or whoever to tell them that everything is well with the world and you can stop worrying. You know, you get your little injection of um, optimistic corpuscles every week and that's fine into your bloodstream you're happy um, that's a horrifying thought to some people it used to horrify me to think that my god these sheeple just actually are happy being sheeple but you know you, what can you do you know if they are the way they are they are with the way they are um, and you know a chocolate bar is enough for them? Well, why should I demand that they analyze or that they're eating that chocolate bar and tell uh, me exactly why this actually makes a difference to them in their life, the quality of their life? Um, you know, the, the last man may very well be the, more or less the rule of things for most of human society. We just want to be undisturbed by horrible ideas, by frightening things, by anything that will shake our peace of mind which I think accounts for a lot of the problems that the Islamic world is having right now because they relied on simply blotting out anything that disturbed the common people's peace of mind for a millennium and now that is no longer possible and they are in serious trouble but you know again along comes consumer capitalism to fill that void in their lives and next thing you know they're just happy suburbanites like the rest of us in North America in Western Europe um, but what about the people to whom that doesn't make sense and is actually toxic? Well, uh, then you start to ask questions. Then you start to sort of think, okay, everything that the world has inherent in it is of no meaning to me, of, or at least of reduced meaning compared to most other people. Um, what now? Now the real work starts of you know, in the dichotomy in Shawshank of get busy living or get busy dying. What does that mean, get busy living? <laughs> um, that's a stark choice, isn't it? And I would say that people who sort of don't actually face that choice and, and sort of make that choice are sort of, I don't know, in some sort of undead kind of state where they haven't made up their minds to live and they can't bring themselves to die. Um, and, well, okay, and uh, unfortunate, but, you know, if you can't make the most basic decisions, if you think that life is hellish, but you can't leave, um, or at least that life is empty and you can't leave, I I don't know. I don't know what can be done, but what I would say is, in the normal course of events, it will get sorted out for you, because, well, a uh, finite lifespan of humans will take care of everything. Omnia transient. 
Uh, but for those of us who have sort of distanced ourselves slightly from the common run of humanity, and it could be everybody that has done this, now that we're the whole human race now has access to this kind of philosophy, thanks to the Internet, um, well, we may be actually entering into a new sort of age of Aquarius or something. I don't know. I don't care, really. It, again, it'll probably just turn out to be just more or less the old things in a new wrapper, but what about what what do future ages provide or offer or hold possibly for those of us who are determined to make something out of being here? Um, I support the view that say things like the Athenian Acropolis or um, even say the Eiffel Tower or the um, Great Pyramids or the Pyramids of Mesoamerica or Things like that, just these, you know, grand projets that are meant to sort of be truly great. This is their, their design for this. Is there to fill in that void, I guess. Just big things to sort of say, we were here. Or um, big things for us to behold once we uh, complete them and we say, wow, we did this. Um, we actually mean something uh, in the cosmos. Um... And I think that that's kind of the um, the message behind that I see behind things like the Parthenon or the Pyramids of Giza or even say the uh, the, the Great Wall of China or something like that. It's uh, humanity just going eh, ha, ha, mortality, you know. Um, individually, we'll be mortals. We'll, we're we're mortals, but um, if we step out of ourselves, you know, we can produce things like Shakespeare or whatever. Um, is that enough? I would say that it's it's a lot. It's enough, I think, at least, to justify uh, not killing oneself. That's for sure. And it's certainly enough, if you ask me, to justify um, living one's life to the full. Um, it, you know, when you compare non-existence to that, I'll take I'll take the Great Pyramids, and you know being one of those Viking sailors who sailed off to the infinite horizon not really knowing where they were going to land. Um, that's the kind of thing that I think that makes life worth living, and we can all do that. We all have access to that in our own little way. Uh, we all have our own way to achieve greatness and value as we ourselves define it. Um, most people, the herd, seem to need to be able to push a button and their meaning appears for them. Some of us, I think, want something different. I won't say more, but something different. We want something that requires struggle. Then it has value for us. I know what a cynic would say about that. Um, but, you know, cynics can say whatever they like. 